Now, I know grand statements never help, but this one is pretty spot on. The immediate future of West Asia depends on one man, Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel. This situation is tailor-made for him. It's a chance to take the focus away from Gaza. It's also a chance to fulfill his career-long goal, to strike deep inside Iran, to take out their strategic assets, including their nuclear sites. Just one problem, though. His allies are not on board. Both the US and the UK have urged de-escalation. Like I said, Biden has reportedly made his stand clear to Netanyahu. If you attack Iran, we will not help. But where does that leave the Prime Minister of Israel? What options does he have? In public, Netanyahu is defiant. He says Israel is ready for all scenarios, both defensive and offensive. Citizens of Israel in recent years, and especially in recent weeks, Israel has been preparing for a direct attack by Iran. Our defensive systems are deployed. We are ready for any scenario, both defensively and offensively. The state of Israel is strong. The IDF is strong. The public is strong. So he's not ruled out retaliation, and you can see why. Netanyahu's popularity has hit rock bottom. The only thing keeping him in office is the Gaza war. But he's running out of places to attack. Israel has reached the southernmost point of Gaza, so he's got to wind up the war sooner or later, which means he may have to step down. And in that context, a conflict with Iran would help him. It would extend his time in office. But the trade-off would be huge. Israel's last attack was, an, was on Iranian consulate. So Tehran's response was lukewarm, borderline performative. But what if Israel strikes Iranian cities and military targets? Chances are the response won't be lukewarm. If the Zionist regime takes any action against the Islamic Republic, whether on our soil or in places belonging to us in Syria or elsewhere, our next operation will be much larger. So what options does Netanyahu have? We can think of three of them. The first is to call it square. Israel's first strike killed top Iranian commanders. Compared to that, Iran did not cause much damage, so Netanyahu can leave it at that, a score of 1-1. The second option is to target Iranian proxies. Now, we've already seen attacks on the Hezbollah in, in Lebanon. Israel can keep doing that. Iran has many assets and military sites in the region, like in Syria, in Iraq, and Yemen. Israel could choose to target them instead. It's relatively low risk. And finally, option number three, hit back inside Iran. This would likely lead to a cycle of reprisals, in the worst case, even war. So will Benjamin Netanyahu risk it? Well, logic says he won't, but in the last six months, we've not seen a lot of display of that logic. So we've also seen a lot of confusing de decisions, some of which make no strategic sense. So a lot depends on Netanyahu's allies, first of all. How much pressure can the West put on him? Will they threaten to cut off military aid? Same with Israel's neighbors. A wider war would affect all of them. It would disrupt oil trade via the Strait of Hormuz, and Iran has always threatened to close it, and this would give them the perfect excuse to do it. Around 30%, 30% of global oil trade passes via this route. If Iran shuts it, West Asia will suffer. That's enough reason for them to urge de-escalation. I guess it's all about appetite and ambition. Netanyahu has enough reasons to claim a success. He took out top Iranian commanders. He repelled a massive Iranian attack. Plus, he's rallied, rallied his Western allies. For most people, that would be a win. But Netanyahu does not think like that. He's not just focused on Israel's strategic goals. He's also focused on his political career which is why this is a dangerous moment. Israel's war cabinet is meeting to discuss the way forward. There are three members in this cabinet. One of them is Benny Gantz. He's a former defense minister, also a rival of Netanyahu. Gantz says Israel will respond at the right time. In the face of the Iranian threat, we will build a regional coalition and exact the price from Iran in the fashion and timing that is right for us. And most importantly, faced with the desire of our enemies to harm us, we will continue to unite and become stronger. Chances are there will be some sort of response. The only question is, how far will it go?